Brandon from Page Turner Entertainment. I got a friend of mine, Paulette McKenzie Leapheart. How you doing today? I'm doing great. Hi, Brandon. How's it going? Uh, it's going. It's hot. Right. <laughs> you traveled, well, you're almost a thousand miles done, right? Uh, yes, yeah, so I've come over, I've traveled over 800 miles. Uh-huh. About feet. Uh-huh. I'm um, walking. Uh-huh. Like Mississippi, and I'm mm -hmm. on my way to Washington, D.C. Got gotcha. you. To meet with Congress about um, better health care in America. Got gotcha. you. Got gotcha. you. So tell me this right here. I mean, um, I read I read your bio. Uh, you had uh, breast cancer, aggressive, and uh, had to do double, I, I can't pronounce it. A double mastectomy. Mastectomy. Yes. Okay. So just tell me, how what, what, what was the feeling at that point right there? Well, God came to me at 2 o'clock in the morning. Brandon and told me, in my, woke me up out of my sleep and told me that I had cancer going in my breast. And it wow. woke me up. Uh -huh. um, I was 47 years old. I had never, ever had a mammogram. Mm -hmm. And I come from a history. I had a family history of breast cancer. Mm -hmm. But I was one of those who just thought it would never happen to me. Mm -hmm. And the other flip side of that, even though I had family members, my grandma, my mom, my mom's sister and a cousin with the disease, diagnosed with the disease. They really never talked about it, you know? They, we just, it just wasn't a big deal. Mm -hmm. So I didn't pay attention to it, even though I lost my cousin six months before I was diagnosed with the disease. So um, after I was diagnosed, of course, you know, I wasn't shocked. You know, but I knew God had me because he was the one to wake me up and, and tell me I had it. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't scared. I think I was more angry than I was scared. Gotcha. gotcha. You know, and after the diagnosis, the doctor told me my prognosis and his recommendations. And because of the type of cancer and because of my family history of breast cancer, my, um, my surgeon, breast surgeon, um, suggested that we do a double mastectomy. Okay. You know, and I was okay with that because, you know, they were trying to kill me. So I didn't want to hold on to something that was trying to take me away from my kids. But what depressed me was finding out that I wasn't a candidate for reconstruction. <coughs> Meaning I couldn't get new new um, breasts. Gotcha. And that was because I have other health issues that would have caused, um, a threat, would have been a threat to my life. Gotcha. So I'm left with the scars. Mm -hmm. I'm alive. Right. You know, and um, <clears throat> I don't want any any woman to go through what I went through. I understand. Um, you know, losing your breast, you know, is amputation of a body part. So it's, of course, it's devastating. Right. As a female, you know, from a little girl, we was taught that our breast is what made us women. So I can remember being a little girl stuffing socks in my shirt. Mm -hmm. You know, pretending the socks was my breast and I was a lady now. So I identified my breast with my femininity as a woman. So that losing them was like, you know, it was devastation. You know? I just told people that I was going to interview you and a lot of people heard about you. And they admired your courageous. Thank you. Uh, it's, it's, not, a, it's, it's, a, it's God. Exactly. He gave me the vision. Mm -hmm. You know, he gave me the vision. He said he wanted to use my scars. Mm -hmm. You know, to give people hope and 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 and, and have people to have faith and trust in him. You know that if you know he healed me. You know, and no matter what we're going through, no matter what our circumstances are, he wants us to know that he's with us. You know, he, he would never leave or forsake us. Yes. So, walking a thousand miles across the country and as I travel through um, cities and towns and, and on the, you know, walking the streets, it's exactly what God said. It My scars really are doing what God said they would do. Mm -hmm. They're giving people hope, you know. It inspires people, you know. To most people that see me, the first thing they tell me is, I thought I had problems. I don't have problems. <laughs> so it kind of shocks the, them back into reality. Gotcha. So they can be grateful for what they do have, and that's their health and their life. 
Gotcha. And that's all that matters. You're doing a lot of stuff. You're in a lot of magazines and a lot of uh, newspapers. Um, and you were featured in Beyonce's Lemonade. How did that come about? Well, I, I was, uh, <laughs> that was that was my design. I can say it was God's design. Right. To connect me with one of the most um, powerful women on earth, mm -hmm. you know. Especially when it comes to body image. You know, God connected me with, with Beyonce. Mm -hmm. um, I took my eight-year-old daughter in to audition for, to be in a video. Mm -hmm. um, for a friend's request. Mm -hmm. But I had no idea who, who the person was. Mm -hmm. I had no idea what the video was about. So I did take her in um, to interview. Mm -hmm. And while we were there, um, the interviewer, the interview, the interviewer came out to get her, mm -hmm. but she was reluctant to go with the interviewer, the lady from the um, casting agency, right. because she didn't know her. Right. So I was trying to explain to the lady from the casting agency that, you know, she don't do anything without me. Right. And I told her a little bit about my story. I said I just, you know, I just beat breast cancer, and I showed her my scars, and she was like, wow. Do you mind interviewing in front of a, a, a camera? You know, because um, the video, um, the director's looking for women like you. Mm -hmm. You know, so I was like, uh, I'm not prepared to <laughs> to interview on video, but I have a teaser to my trailer. Got you. You know, a documentary that's being done about me. And I showed it to her and she was blown away. Awesome. And she said, she asked me if she could show it to the directors. Mm -hmm. And I said, yes. And before the next day or the night, that night, I can't remember, I got a call back from the casting agency. Mm -hmm. And they said the director saw your video. Okay. And they really want you to be a part of this, this project that they're doing. I okay. said, I, uh, I don't know about being in the video. I said, I don't <laughs> dance, I don't twerk, I don't do none of that stuff. And she was like, Miss Paulette, you want to be a part of this. You really want to be a part of this. And I said, like, but who is it? You know, and she was like, "Well, I can't tell you who it is. The, I can't, I can't agree to be a part of something that you don't know. And I don't you know, know what it good, is. What it and is. She yeah. said it's a, she said it's a super, super superstar. That's what she said. Right. And I, when she said secretive and super superstar, and there was a female, I kind of put it together. I said it's Beyonce, and she said I didn't tell you that. <laughs> and then uh, she said she really wants you to be a part of this project. So awesome. that's how it happened. Awesome. I commend you. You're a very courageous woman, and I appreciate you giving me, you know, a little bit of your time. I know you're a busy woman. I know it's a hectic schedule. Yes. Um, you know, and I know, you know, watching or you walking to Washington D.C. I know you're gonna get things done. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I got done. Congress attention, and that was the purpose. Gotcha. You know, my walk had many purposes. Gotcha. You know, the one purpose for me to walk topless. Uh -huh. is to help women like myself mm -hmm. who have had the double mastectomies without reconstruction. Gotcha. You know, I wanted to help them understand that they shouldn't be ashamed of their scars. Gotcha. You know, our scars, there's nothing to be ashamed of. Exactly. You know, we can embrace it because without the, without the scars, without the scars, we, that means whatever try to take us mm -hmm. want. Right. You know, the scars say, hey, we won the battle. Right. So, and I wanted to put my scars in the shame on um, Congress. Okay. Shame on America because of the cost of, of, of health care in this country. It's crazy. Yes. It's crazy. So, and that's my, that's my purpose is to go and fight for better health care for everybody. What's, what's your contact information? This is the last question. What's your contact um, You can follow me on my Facebook page. Mm -hmm. um, I have um, a, a public page, Prayers for Paulette. All right. P-A-U-L-E-T-T-E. -T -E, okay. The number eight okay. children. Prayers for Paulette, eight children. Or you can um, follow me on my, my personal page, Paulette McKenzie, M-C-K-E-N-Z-I-E, -E, mm -hmm. Lee Park. L-E-A-P-H-A-R-T. All right. Thank you, Mr. Thank Lee Park. You.